In today's show, we've got news about Disneyland reopening, a new creation shop is coming to Epcot, new Disney Parks podcast events, headline news, meetups, trivia, and oh so much more in today's Disney Parks podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Hey guys, welcome. So glad that you're here. We want to let you know a couple different things. One, we've got a brand new show alert that's coming out. We've got our uh, former Walt Disney Imagineer, Brian Collins, is joining us. And we're going to be doing a special show once a month with Brian. Uh, we're going to be recording it tomorrow night. So we'll probably be debuting that next week or two. Uh, so be on the lookout for Imagineering the Magic uh, with Brian Collins. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait uh, to share it. We've already got one episode and I think the response has been pretty great right yeah yeah, yeah very good yeah, pretty good uh and the second thing is is before we get into everything i want to make sure that you know about our good friends over at destinations to travel uh it doesn't matter what type of vacation you're planning i know as things are starting to open up we're thinking about getting out of our houses and going and visiting some places so why not reach out to our good friends at destinations to travel to help you plan your next vacation because things have changed and it's always great to uh to know ahead of time before you set out on a, a new adventure to see what's different and what's required of us now. Uh, so reach out to our friends over there. The best way to do that is to go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash travel. Uh, fill out a quick survey and someone from Destinations to Travel will get right back to you. And uh, speaking of Destinations to Travel, I want to give a shout out to our buddies Christina Smith and Adriana Bonetti, uh, Bonetti excuse me, uh, for the great articles that they've been writing over at Disney Parks Podcast. Com. So go check uh, Christina's and Adriana's uh, posts. They've been amazing. Uh, I'm learning a lot just reading them, and uh, you will too. So go check them out. Thank you. And uh, we just want to say thanks again to our good friends over at Destinations to Travel. How are you doing tonight, Uncle Tony? Very good. Yeah? Good show and tell. Dun, dun, dun. I don't have a switch near me, otherwise I'd light it up. It's a castle. Uh, it's a ca It's a castle. So this is uh you can do this uh currently at Chef Mickey's. It's uh thirty dollars. You can uh uh sign up. Uh you can pick uh six paint colors uh to use and uh you paint your castle and then uh if you get it done uh it starts at five thirty. If you get it done by seven, uh they will um put a clear coat on it. Uh so it's uh you know crystallized forever. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, I have a feeling it'll, it's going to cancel or stop in May when uh, Chef Mickey opens uh, for dinner. So uh, yeah. if you're interested, oh, Amber Alert. Uh, Amber Alert. <laughs> Somebody stole a kid. Uh, yeah. If you So if you want one of these, uh, try and get it done uh, before May because, uh, I like I said, they may move it to someplace else that's close, but, uh, um, you know. Everybody was doing a theme. I mean, there were some people that really had some art, some skill. Yeah. <laughs> this is not art or skill. <laughs> this is just an idiot with a paintbrush. <laughs> nope, no comment. I wasn't going to say anything, but hey. Yeah, so uh, go check that out. Yeah, sweet, awesome. Uh, so what about right, you? So, Did you uh, do anything uh, Disney esque? Um, well, this weather wasn't great this weekend, so yeah. I wound up in a bunch of destin uh, de destination, a bunch of Disney Plus stuff. I watched, yeah. uh, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We caught up on that. We did uh, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Um, we watched a uh, couple of Disney movies. Um. Oh man, they're just I can't remember what honestly I can't really remember what we did this weekend. It's, just a, it's a long weekend of just we were really busy on Saturday and the storm was crazy and I wound up working a lot the, right. over the week. So that's kind of what right. I did. Yeah. Um someone's gonna ask you, but I can't quite remember what it was. It'll come to me. Yeah. Anyway, um you wanna go ahead and get into it? Sure. There's nothing else that we could do but get into the news. <laughs> And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. 
All right, everybody. Attractions and entertainment are going to be reopening uh, over at Disneyland Resort Theme Park. So we got some details. Uh, there's going to be plenty of magic to go around, uh, plenty of magic to go around in different and new ways, socially distant, of course, of course, uh, including surprise appearances by your favorite Disney friends. Uh, plus, most of your favorite attractions will be available in both parks for you to enjoy. Uh, as we've been chatting about ad nauseum, it feels like for the last few weeks, select attractions and certain experiences that draw large groups of gatherings, such as parades and nighttime spectaculars, will return at a later date next year. <laughs> Excuse me. Did that come out? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you can see most of the details uh, for some of that over at Disneyland.com. Uh, but upon reopening, uh, Disneyland will continue leveraging a virtual queue system for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. The attraction's virtual queue is only accessible via the Disneyland mobile app. You may only experience the attraction by joining the virtual queue. Distribution times for virtual queue enrollment will be twice daily and one in the morning uh, and one later in the afternoon. Sometimes and details will be shared at a later date. I'm going to be saying that a lot when we're talking about Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Anywho. Um, Continuing on, guests with a valid ticket and theme park reservations will start their day at Disneyland Park. Uh, they'll be able to access a virtual queue system and check on uh, available boarding groups in the morning uh, on the day of their park reservations. Guests will need to have their park tickets linked uh, to their Disney account if you want to ride together. To access the second virtual queue. Okay, so this is supposed to be about Disneyland opening. It feels like all yeah. I'm doing is Star Wars land. Uh, okay, fine. The second virtual queue opportunity for later that day uh, will have guests uh, making uh, making sure you have a park uh, valid ticket and a park reservation and have entered Disneyland Park or Disney California Adventure Park with a park hopper ticket. So they have park hopper tickets over there? They are allowed to park hop, yes. Hmm. Uh, you must be in one of those two parks by the second enrollment time. Guests beginning their day at Disney California Adventure Park may then enter Disneyland Park with their park hopper ticket after 1 p.m. for their boarding group. Uh, you may also come across some similar uh, familiar faces as you wander Black Spire Outpost, including Ray, Chewbacca, and V. Moradi. They may be spotted above the speeder garage at Black Spire Station. Watch out for the stormtroopers, along with Kylo Ren himself, patrolling uh, a platform where Thai Echelon starfighters loom. Uh, now, you'd think they'd be able to walk around the crowd because they have masks on. Right. Literal masks. <laughs> for a dose of nostalgia in Disneyland Park, check out the newly reimagined Snow White's Enchanted Wish and freshly fan... Hang on, I can say this. Hang on. Freshly fancified King Arthur Carousel in Fantasyland. Then visit the Haunted Mansion in New Orleans Square, home to 99 Happy Haunts and a few more spirited enhancements. I saw some video of that today. Yeah. Uh, favorite characters may be spotted throughout the day, waving to visiting friends, uh, posing in the background. Hello, you're 27 feet away, but I'm over here. Right. Uh, and having fun playing in the parks. Uh, at Disneyland Park, you may see Mickey Mouse and some of his pals from the steps of the Main Street USA Railroad train station, mm. uh, at, or perhaps they may be found outside their homes in Mickey Toontown, waving a friendly welcome to visitors of all ages, but you best not go near uh, character sight. Sorry, that's horrible. <laughs> character sight. Lou Mangello would never say that. Uh, character sight. Hang on. <coughs> <clears throat> Character sightings at Disney California Adventure Park may include friends appearing at Carthay Circle and the Pic Pixar Pier Band Shell. Uh, Disney Junior stars from Vampirina and Doc McStuffins may say hello from the stage of the Disney Theater in Hollywood Land. <laughs> Throughout the day in Hollywood Land at California Adventure Park, cheer for some of Earth's mightiest heroes, including Black Widow. She go, uh, Captain America, Thor, Spider Man, Black Panther, no comment, and the Dora Milaje. Uh, that's the uh, the lady women who were bald who were amazing with staffs, oh. and that's his personal Black Panther's personal right. cards are the Dora Milaje, right? 
just so you know, uh, as they strike heroic poses uh, from the Hollywood backlot stage 29 miles away. Uh, though uh, these superheroes will then be regular visitors at Adventurous Campus when the land opens on June 4th. Uh, both a theme park reservation and valid admission ticket for the same park on the same day are required for guests ages 3 and up. Guests must have a valid theme park admission ticket in order to make a reservation. Theme park reservations will be limited and subject to availability and until further notice only california residents may visit the park and in groups no larger than three households in line with current state guidelines for details on how you can make a theme park reservation check out disneyland.com and they're excited to see you back i know you guys are excited to go yeah sounds a lot of fun though yeah they got a couple extra little enhancements up their sleeve than uh, we got uh, mm. Because they learned all the lessons from you know our opening to make mm-hmm. it a little bit easier and better over there. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, the other big news item was that the new Creation Shop is opening this summer at Epcot, uh, and the next milestone in the park's historic transformation or destruction, depending on how you want to view that. Uh, this is uh, you know the new. Version of Mouse Gears Part Two, Mouse Gears yeah. version Part Two. Two so, uh, There's a lot of concept art, art. I would tell you to go look at it on the Disney Parks blog. Uh, there's a large mural of Mickey Mouse along one of the shop's walls. And there was a lot of good art on the walls of Mouse Gears before they decided to, you know, take the building to the studs. Uh, or to the dirt. Uh, mm-hmm. We were, Mickey was inspired uh, as their subject creativity, but this is Mickey like you've never seen him before. Uh, you'll discover the original homage to uh, him throughout the space, including large dynamic murals and new artist expressions that showcase the global contemporary icon mm-hmm. that Mickey has become for generations around the world. So yeah. that means we'll get new version Mickey, not old steamboat, you know, fun yeah. looking Mickey. Yeah. Uh, they're excited to feature this art program, completely original works that will live uh, on this space as a testament to the park's ability to inspire the dreamer. And that will be the statue that they put up of Walt, the dreamer nice. in all of us. Uh, the goal of the creation shop is to be more than a place to pick up your memento uh, at your time at Epcot, but they want you to, uh, they want your every moment with them to be an experience worthy of the park's vision and tradition. Mm. The products you will find here will extend Disney storytelling and allow you to bring the experience home with all of you, all while encouraging you to explore your own expressiveness and creativity. Nice. Coming back and adjacent to this shop will be a revitalized Club Cool hosted by Coca-Cola, which will also open this summer. Uh, The celebration of Coca-Cola in a new and fresh way while keeping the fan favorite experience that invites you to explore tasty drinks from around the world. Uh, This space will also have some new magic to bring the global experience of Coca-Cola uh, life for you. I'm excited about that. I, I hope that they uh, they do it in such a way where the floor is not sticky all the time. Make it a great so it just falls yeah, down just, just some sure. drain. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's great. I'm excited. I was very excited when I heard that Club Cool is coming back. I hope they have, like, uh, different stations. Like, you know, good, better, and... We dare you to try this. This is awful Coke. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody complained about the uh, Beverly, but I didn't think yeah. Beverly was that bad. I thought there was other stuff that was worse. Yeah. I, I would like to see them do like, you, you know, Europe, Asia, Africa. Yeah. You know, Australia, different parts of the world. Right. This, this right. is what they're drinking. I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. More of it. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And rotate them in and out. You know, don't. Don't keep Beverly for like forever, you know, keep it for a while. And then, then yeah. people have to go back. Right. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're trying to make people do? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Opening a creation shop and club cool will be 
an important milestone in the ongoing trans- uh, transformation of the park. Uh, these fun and angelic locations will uh, continue to be a reimagining of what soon will be a new neighborhood at the entrance and the center of the park called World Celebration. That's not confusing to World Showcase and then World Celebration. That's not going to be confusing at all. Where am I going to meet you? World Celebration. World Showcase. Showcase. World Show Place. That's not going to be confusing. Not at all. I just work here. (laughs) So, uh, superheroes, it's time to assemble because we've all been anticipating Disney uh, is also now pleased to share that the Avengers Campus, an entirely new land dedicated to discovering recruiting and training the next generation of superheroes will be open on july uh, excuse me on june 4th 2021 at disneyland resort can you believe it no finally gonna see that spider-man fly (laughs) oh man i would love to be there for that yeah yeah at this fully immersive and, and land inside of Disney California Adventure Park, guests will be invited to team up with the Avengers and their allies and live out their superhero dreams. Avengers Campus comprises several heroic locations, each hosted by a different Avenger to share their unique powers, technology, and knowledge with recruits. The first key area is Worldwide Engineering Brigade, also known as WEB. They shoehorn that together. It brings together bright innovators like Peter Parker, who have been assembled by Tony Stark to invent new technologies and equip everyday people to become superheroes like the Avengers. Web will house the new Web Slingers, a star, uh, excuse me, I cannot read tonight. <laughs> Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, the first Disney ride through attraction to feature the iconic friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Because, you know, we can't have anything like that on this side of the Mississippi because universal. We, uh, Disney's previously shared that Tom Holland will reprise his role as Spider-Man in the new family-friendly attraction, which invites guests to put their web-slinging skills to the I got this, Blue. Put their web-slinging skills to the test and experience what it's like to have powers alongside Spider-Man, a feat accomplished by innovative technology adapted specifically for this attraction, uh, perfect for up-and-coming recruits of all ages. The second anchor attraction looms high above the land. We know it. We love it. It's called Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, a fan favorite that opened in 2017. This rockin' adventure blasts guests straight into the Guardians of the Galaxy story alongside characters from the blockbuster films and comics. Help Rocket bust his fellow Guardians out of the Collector's Fortress and experience raucous mayhem, music inspired by the soundtracks from the movies, thrilling free-fall drop sequences, and six... Count them six different storylines. Wow. Adjacent to the PIM test kitchen, an oversized beer can overheard signals that, uh, excuse me, overhead signals that grown up beverages, uh, beverage tasting are available at PIM tasting lab. Uh, guests can order a craft beer ranging from a blood orange Hefeweizen to an amber lager to one of the PIM research staff's picks. I don't know what the word there was. Pim picks, I think was probably what they yeah, meant to say. Right. Visit one of the Avengers' favorite food joints, the Shwarma Palace. <laughs> one ad lib line, and yeah. it's just becoming a thing. Uh, enjoy a Shwarma wrap at this food court, which is decked out with memorabilia for the Avengers fans. Lastly, uh, you can go to Tindlier Tivian. Uh, did not limit his collection to love of misfits. He also create, curated a world, a world of weird, a wonderful menu uh, with intergalactic eats of the Terran Treats food cart near Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Uh, throughout Adventures Campus, superheroes will come to life in exciting ways. Guests may have heroic encounters with Iron Man, the Captain Marvel, the Black Panther, and the Dora Milaje, Black <laughs> Widow, Ant-Man, and the Wasp, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, and even villains like Loki. Uh, they'll just wave you from the grassy knoll, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't say anything about grassy knolls, because you know what happened last time. <laughs> anyway, guests may even have the chance to witness Spider-Man swinging into action high above Avengers Campus. 
with death-defying acrobatic feats never before seen in a Disneyland theme park, performed by a robot that we've seen tested for decades. At a nearby ancient sanctum, Doctor Strange will train recruits in the mystic arts by bringing this ancient sanctum to life with powerful spells. At night, the area glows even more vividly with majestic colors and lights pulsating with uh, mystic energy. Uh, the campus supply pod is a place to power up with official Avengers campus gear, including performance fleece hoodies and tees, headwear, drinkware, and other superhero supplies. And uh, everyone is counting out of the days until everyone can team up with the Avengers and their allies, sling webs for Spider-Man, taste, test, innovative food and drinks, and become part of a bigger universe alongside some of our favorite superheroes. Um, one quick comment about this. There's one attraction. Yeah. Yeah. One extra attraction. And that's it. The rest is experiences. Yeah. New yeah. They've already experiences. got experiences. The, yeah. They already got the Tower of Terror. I mean, the uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Yeah. So they've got one new attraction. Yeah. And food and merch. Yeah. Listen, uh, the only thing I really want to see is Spider Man fly. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. really the only thing. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, if I could go, I would probably just stand there all day and just watch it, you know, because it was fascinating to watch this whole evolution uh, of them testing it on the internets. And now, you know, nothing yeah. would make me happier to just, you know, see Spider-Man. Yeah. I want to know uh, who's the guy that has to uh, dress that robot up every day in the Spider-Man outfit. <laughs> That's probably not an easy job. You know, it's yeah, probably like I, trying I, to put a wetsuit on a dead man. You know, I, I'm just thinking of like weekends at Bernie's. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's not just painted, you know, yeah, it could it's be. like could custom be. paint paint thing that they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. That might, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, could be. We'll have to see. Maybe they'll tell us. All right. Uh, Captain Minnie is uh, taking over the helm of the Disney Wish. Uh I hope she knows that uh, she can't come to Florida quite yet. Mm -mm. Uh, Captain Minnie is already making wishes come true uh, for the newest addition to the Disney cruise fleet. Uh, Disney unveiled that the beloved character will come to life for the first time through the whimsical artwork on the bow of the Disney wish. Wasn't she named captain of one of the other ships too? How is she going to do both of them? I, I don't know. I, I want to say that she is, but I mean, I don't. I don't know for a fact. I haven't yeah. been on all the ships. Yeah. Catch one of the travel people would know. Yeah. Uh, the bow's elegant uh, filigree art, a hallmark of Disney Cruise Line vessels, includes an intricate scrollwork pattern reminiscent of the classic ocean liners of the '30s, and the portrait of Captain Minnie on the Disney Wish adds just the right amount of whimsy to the design. Uh, the magic of a Captain Minnie also came alive as they reached a significant construction milestone to the Disney Wish, uh, marking it by the traditional keel laying ceremony uh, during a, a ship's construction when the first block or section of a ship is lowered into the building dock a newly minted coin is placed under the keel for good fortune uh, the coin created for the Disney wish uh, features more uh, none other than you guessed it Captain Minnie uh, their newest captain in her bold red jacket made uh, her splash aboard the Disney Cruise Line in 2019. See, I, I think in there. As part of the collection of initiatives uh, aiming to inspire the next generation of female leaders in the cruise industry. And right. with Captain Minnie at the helm of the Disney Wish, our hope is to continue inspiring girls and young women around the globe. Uh, we've been teasing details about the Disney Wish uh, since it was first reze- revealed the fleet expansion, and now they're itching to know more. So stay tuned. Yeah. This was the thing that broke the internet uh, last week because this was like all over. Yeah. And that's great. I mean, I love it. I I was I, I'm excited that there's uh, more Disney ships coming. I think it's it's great that Minnie gets her own ship. I, I'm looking forward to the day when they branch away from the Fab Four. Mm. You know, Mickey, Donald, Daisy, uh, Goofy, not Goofy, um, Minnie. 
Yeah. Mickey, Minnie, uh, Donald. Pluto. Goofy. I don't think, I don't Daisy, think Pluto. Donald. Yeah. Mm. So do you think they'll ever do um, like complete uh, Star Wars or Marvel or Pixar? You know, I'd like to see Buzz uh, be the captain of a ship. If <laughs> we'll go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, Disney just prints money when they when they put the put these ships out there, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And they're always full and they always have mm. you know a backlog of people who want to go, but they're also the most some of the most expensive cruises, yeah. regular cruises, you know, outside of like high end cruises, you know, uh that are out there. You know they're they're very expensive for, you know one cruise is only like three or four days and one is is a week, right? Unless they have like the big, big event right. cruises. So I I think that they um they should, in my opinion, to build smaller boats. Mm. You know, size of the the current like the current um, like the magic. Yeah, like the magic, magic the wonder, and then you've got the Oh crap! I got the boats mixed up. But the the smaller boats, like the first two boats they came out with, right. sl- slightly smaller ones, they could be more boutique cruises. So you could have like a Star Wars yeah. cruise that goes out every week, yeah. and a week long cruise, or, or you have a Marvel cruise that goes out yeah. every week. And it's yeah. they yeah. had that like they were bouncing around that uh, adult uh, concierge, you know, all mm-hmm. sweet, all uh, concierge uh, cruise ship too. So I think people might be interested in that. Um, as well, it's a, it's a great concept. I would love it. I would love a Pixar cruise. Yeah, all Pixar. Yeah, you know, all the time. Yeah. I think it'd be great. I don't know if I'd go on it, but I know somebody who would. Yes. So, uh, guys, we want to encourage you. If you like the show, we appreciate you so much. If you like the show, uh, if you're listening right now and you like maybe to get a little more, maybe a little different spin, a little different flavor, uh, we encourage you to go over to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon uh, and sign up to be uh, one of our Patreons. At the five dollar level, you get two additional shows every week. At the ten dollar level, you get an additional show on top of that. But if you like the Disney by the Number Seizure Club shirts, you can get all three shows plus the shirt uh, for just thirty five bucks a month. Now that's including the t shirt and the extra shows. Now here's the thing: at every level of of support, you're also getting a very robust rewards program as well. So you're getting a bunch of really cool Disney swag from us. Plus you're getting the shows. Plus you're getting all of that. And now Patreon's allowing us to offer you to save 10% when you pay annually. So if you like what we do, you've got some discretionary funds. You'd like to go ahead and pay for the year up front. You can save 10%. And for uh, a limited time, I think we've only got a few hats left. Mm-hmm. Uh, join. Or if you go up a level, you can get uh, a hand-embroidered Pixar hat uh, that uh, have been very popular. We've had those for a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, you can get a, a free hat as well. And who doesn't love pimping out Pixar? Because, come on, it's Pixar, for crying out loud. Exactly. So if you like it. If you, yeah, exactly. If you'd like to support the show, uh, if you'd like to uh, to help us out, plus get some really great content uh, for your your drives to work or your walks or your exercise, um, they're different shows than what you're hearing here. Uh, and we don't publish that content anywhere else but on Patreon. So go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon. And we appreciate each and every one of you who support us and those of you who will be supporting us soon. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so last week, John, we had a trivia question, and it was, uh, how many tentacles uh, did Dory's octopus friend have in the movie Finding Dory? That was a trick question, Tony. Yes. The correct answer is Hank had seven tentacles. Because because Hank was actually a septopod. That's right. So that was a little trickery and deceivery. But uh, Bob R. is the winner, and uh, Bob will put it in the mail to you. So uh, you were nice enough to include your address, which I like. All right. This week's trivia question is this. Which character in Toy Story 3 says this line? And this is quote for quote. You ready? Mm Mm-hmm. Authority should derive from the consent of the governed not 
the threat of force. I did not know that Ronald Reagan was in Toy Story 3. <laughs> All I, right, one more that- time. Authority should derive from the consent of the governed and not from the threat of the force. So, if you know the correct answer, send that to Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com. So, wow. And that's threat of force, not threat of the force. That would yeah, be Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a different movie. Yeah. It's a different, different yeah. planet altogether. You might be surprised who says that, but you'll go Google it and find out. Yeah, yeah, you go do that. Mm-hmm. A double dog dare you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to tell them about what's coming up in the next couple months? Oh, yeah. So uh, May 29th, we're going to AMC Movie Theater. Uh, I still keep looking. They haven't dropped anything in there yet, so we have to wait a little bit longer. All right, we have a new event. Uh, coming up June 12th. And let me grab the thing. Uh, June 12th, we are going to the Boathouse. Uh, we are going to have lunch with uh, our friend, uh, former Imagineer Brian Collins. Uh, and it's uh, lunch. So if you would like a ticket, there are only six tickets for this event. Six tickets for this event. Uh, go to... Uh, the address that's on the screen, and if you can't see the screen because you're listening to the recording, it's uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash DPP with Brian. So it's Disney Parks Podcast, DPP with Brian dot eventbrite dot com. And uh, get your ticket. And uh, the ticket is out there. But that ticket does not include lunch. So lunch will be on you. Uh, the ticket just covers the cost of uh, uh, the event and uh, hosting Brian. So uh, yeah. go check that out. I think uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun. We're guesstimating three, three and a half hours and make it longer, uh, depending if you all have good questions, uh, if Brian's got nothing to do. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's Brian's got a ton of a ton of great stories. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're not a part of our Patreon uh, community, um, you know you're not going to hear some of the extra stuff uh, that we put out there. So, all you're going to hear for Brian is what we put out here once a month. You get a chance to sit down with a real Walt Disney Imagineer, uh, and you hang out with us, and you have lunch, and then uh, he's going to share stories, answer questions. It's going to be amazing. Yep. So, yeah, please come on, hang out. And it's yep. limited. You had to be limited because of social distancing and all that yep. other stuff. So, right. yeah. If you wanted to do this through Disney, it would be at least twice as much, if not more. So, yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. it's hard to get space at the boathouse. So, yeah. Know some connections and swag over there. All right, anyway, uh, August 7th, we're going to Ravello at the Four Seasons. Uh, that will be a character breakfast. Uh, more, inform- more information will be coming. And then uh, December 11th, we plan on a monorail crawl. So uh, mark your calendars if you want to come into town for that. Uh, that is a lot of fun. Hopefully, uh, it won't be masks, uh, you know, stores through a mask. Hopefully, we can actually uh, talk to each other. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. Uh, now you can get ready to uh, check into the magic at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa with their phased reopening at Disneyland. Uh, Disneyland and Disney California Adventure Parks plan to reopen to guests on April 30th of 2021. Uh, Disney is looking forward to welcoming you back to the Disneyland Resort, including guests uh, at Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa will, reop- will reopen on April 29th with limited capability or capacity, excuse me. And you can book your hotel hotel reservation starting uh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. The 15th, April 15th. A couple of days from now. Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Thursday, April 15th. Uh, tax day. Uh, old tax day, not new tax day. Uh, the Disneyland Hotel and Disney's Paradise Pier We'll reopen at a later date. Well, hang on just a second. Welcome me back to Disney Resort. Disney's Grand California. I get it. 
So uh, guests can relax with an overnight stay, enjoying attentive service in a magical place with amenities reserved just for them. Steps from the gateway of downtown Disney District to Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure Park. Bringing the same enchanting Disney magic, quality, and genuine hospitality guests have come to expect, uh, they will enjoy convenient proximity to the parks, well-appointed accommodations, sparkling pools, cabana service, and even special Disney character wake-up calls by request. During your stay, uh, guests can be sure to grab a delicious bite, refreshing drink at the C. Uh, GCH Craftsman Bar and Grill uh, or at Hearthstone Lounge with sit down dining and new mobile order options available. Sit down dining <laughs> in California. Yeah. Get at Good it. God. Good God Almighty. Yeah. If you're heading to Disney's California Adventure, damn it. If you're heading to Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa, here are five, count them, five things that you need to know before your arrival. Six. I'm going to give you a bonus. You yeah. can only be from California. Yeah. So that's the question. Uh, can I stay at the hotel and not be a California person, or is that only if I'm going to a park? I know, right? I mean, can I just go and just I don't know, shop go. at Downtown Disney and and take yeah. a you know swim at the pool, grab some cocktails, you know, watch well, nothing from my room right happen because there's no fireworks. Yeah. Yeah, who wants to go to California right now? It's a scary place to be. Yeah, it's horrible. Jeez. Uh, guests can check in online before they arrive at the hotel to save time while also promoting physical distancing. Uh, they can even check in online up to five days in advance. A link to use the online check-in service is going to be emailed to guests before they visit. If they don't have a Disney account, they'll need to create one at Disneyland.com to get started. Uh, once you arrive, uh, if you use the online check-in service and have agreed to receive text messages, uh, guests can receive a text message with their uh, when their room is ready. They can stop by the front desk to pick up their key. They're still doing keys over there? Uh, yeah. Uh, for easing and contactless payments throughout their stay, guests can pay for purchases at Disney-operated locations throughout the resort using their hotel room key with a valid credit card on file. Other forms of cashless payment include debit cards, credit cards, Disney gift cards, and tap-to-pay cards. Please check locations for the types of payments accepted. Guests can download the Disneyland app, which will play a more important role than ever during their stay. It's strongly encouraged to plan ahead and utilize mobile ordering for food and beverage purchases from select locations, as well as check park hours, view maps, and other important resort updates. Guests should be sure to download the app ahead of time and have their notification and location services turned on so that they can get in touch with you in case something's changed. The morning of check-in, there's a uh, check-out. There's no need for guests to visit the front desk unless they receive a message or if they have a question. Guests will automatically be checked out for their convenience. May I make a suggestion? Call our friends over at Destinations to Travel. Talk to them if you're going to book your California stay. There's a lot of things you need to know, and our buddies over there will definitely take care of you. Yep. I agree. Yeah, yeah I still would like to know, can anybody go, or is it just uh, still only for Everybody California? in the chat room that knows? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so there was a name announcement for the new Disney uh, hotel opening in Japan, uh, Tokyo Disney Resort uh announced the name of the hotel. Uh, it is the Toy Story Hotel. Uh, Tokyo Disney Resort has announced that its new Toy Story-themed hotel will be called Tokyo Disney Resort Toy Story Hotel. Drolls right off the lips. <laughs> Just call it the Toy Story Hotel. What the, why do you have to put all the other stuff in front of it? You call it Toy Story Hotel at Tokyo Disney Resort. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. With the important thing on the front. Exactly. Uh, it'll be uh, 595 guest rooms with 11 <laughs> floors. The hotel's exterior entrance and lobby and other areas will bring to life the world of toys based on the Academy Award winning Disney and Pixar Toy Story films. Uh, this will be the fifth hotel to open in Japan, but the first moderate type a Disney hotel in the country offering guests a new option between deluxe type and value type. Mm -hmm. uh, the hotel 
situated directly in front of Bayside Station on the Disney Resort line, providing guests easy access to both Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Seas Park. Uh, so go check it out. Mm. Man, I mean, why wouldn't they come? Why, why can't we have one? <laughs> yeah, it seems kind of... They just announced a new Toy Story theme hotel. It's going to be called the Toy Story Hotel. The yeah. Tokyo Disney Resort Toy Story Hotel. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Um, Duh. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> Sometimes. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I recently, well, I can't say that yet. Um, I recently had some experience <laughs> with a, some functions of a major corporation, like global corporation. Mm. And the thing that I noticed is it doesn't matter how big the company is. Sometimes they still act in ways that just don't make sense. You know, they've got a lot of smart people working at this company that I'm talking about. A lot of smart people that I've talked to from that company. What I don't understand is when they make boneheaded decisions like this, Disney, one of the, if not the most creative companies on the planet. And this is how you're going to name your resort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tokyo Disney Resort, Toy Story Hotel. Right. Unless it's lost in translation some way, which is possible, mm. that is a horrible, and I mean, really, seriously, not a great name. Okay. I, I apologize if I'm offending people, but it's just, it's no bueno. Anywho, um, for those not familiar, Capture Your Moment is a personalized 20-minute photo session with a Disney photo pass photographer reserved in advance. Uh, sessions can include up to eight guests and take place on or around Main Street USA, where you can enjoy stunning views of Cinderella Castle. Disney photographers know all the best photo spots and will work with you to determine which photo location is best for you and what you want to capture. Interesting, because I thought that they were kind of making it harder for Disney photographers to... Mm. Anyway, to make it easier for the book for you to book capture your moment starting today, you can now search for available sessions and book online, uh, or you can reserve your session by using the My Disney Experience app. If you want to inform us in advance about the special occasion you'll be celebrating during your session, you can share those details by calling 407 939 7758. Or you can share those spe uh, specifics with your photographer when you check in for your session at Town Square Theater. Either way, your photographer will ensure your session is customized to highlight your unique celebration. Advanced celebrations are strongly recommended, especially for morning sessions. Uh, bookings can be made up to 60 days in advance. A limited number of same-day reservations will be available to inquire. Visit the Disney Photo Pass Center inside Town Square Theater or check for availability and book a session using the My Disney Experience app. Yeah. Prints and digital downloads are not included with the price of a Capture Your Moment session. However, those with a Disney Photo Pass entitlement like Memory Maker or Memory Maker One Day will, as well as qualifying annual pass orders with the Disney Photo Pass download benefit, can download the photos taken at Capture Your Moment from their Disney account at no extra cost. Okay, this session is not cheap. I know that for a fact. Uh, I don't know right. off the top of my head, but uh, from what I remember, it's not cheap. It, and I believe it used to be uh, only for like people that were getting married at first. Uh, you know, when you got married, you you know they would give you this option. You know, you go to the park before it opened and get you know a lot of nice glam shots. You know, in different places. Now I think they're opening it up to like, hey, anybody could do it. And I think right. this operates all day now. It's not just morning or night. I think you can, you know, I don't, there are probably places that you can go where there's less people and they can still capture a moment. But the fact that they're not including any of the pictures with the cost of this, I mean, that's when you have to call up your annual pass friend and say, hey, listen, we're friends on my Disney experience. We're doing this capture the moment thing. Can you download all those pictures and mm -hmm. email them to me when we're done? I mean, come on. At least a digital download, Disney. You know. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. So I just don't get that part. So what are you actually paying for? 
just the time for the photographer? Yeah. 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 And their expertise. And from what I heard, uh, what do they call it? Capture the magic? Capture the moment? Uh, yeah. From what I heard uh, from our friend that got married was it, it wasn't the... Um, you know, they told them... Like uh, the problem was, they they told the photographer what they wanted ahead of time, all the different shots, and then that photographer couldn't make it, I believe. So a substitute photographer went. Then they had to redo everything, you know, tell them all over again, uh, mm-hmm. and say, "All right, this is what we want. This is what we want." So uh, it did not go the way they wanted. But they still had to pay all that money. Yeah, still had to pay all that money. Non refundable. Yeah, of course. That's where that works. <laughs> Nothing's refundable at Disney, I don't think. Let's see how much this is. Capture your moment photography. Hold on. I'm interested now because da 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 engagement, honeymoon, anniversary, child's birth, adoption, birthday, uh know before you go. Where's the heart attack part? Arrival mm-hmm. and check in. It they don't have a cost on here. Interesting. Wedding attire is not permitted. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did, did this? <laughs> okay. So it's engagement or honeymoon or anniversary, but you can't wear your wedding attire. <laughs> Full payment is due at time of booking. Uh, all right, let's see. Wait, right. guess who wish to book time with far to for longer than twenty minutes must book an additional twenty minute session in advance with each session costing fifty dollars. So I don't know what the first session is, but um, each additional twenty minutes is fifty bucks. So uh, I'll do some more research. Wowzers! Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's cheap. I don't think it's cheap. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. Okay. Uh. We all know that magical uh, depression is ending in 2022. In January of uh, 2022, you can no longer take Magical Express. But fear not, my friends. Uh, Mears is going to still run Magical Express. They're just going to call it something different. (laughs) hey (laughs) We don't need Disney. We've been doing this for years. We know how to drive buses. Yeah, so yeah. there's a new direct express uh, from the airport to Disney resorts. Uh, it's, I think it's called Mears Connect, if you want to know the name. So yeah. the Mears Transportation Group, the passenger who actually owns the buses and takes them back and forth to Disney, is now announcing that they will continue offering transportation services to visitors between the airport and area theme parks, not just Disney, all the theme parks, uh, starting January of Guess when? 2022. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> now, do you think there'll be direct routes? Or do you think they'll make people... For emergencies. Would you like to call 122 two, or emergency services? Uh, no, Siri. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, I mean, whoa, whoa. So do you think that there'll be direct routes? Do you think they'll no. make people... Uh, I, I think they'll like combine people? more. I think they'll uh, combine more than Disney would have. Yeah. Oh, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So we got to go to Universal first. And yeah. then we'll go to. Uh, maybe not Universal, but I think they'll do like, you know, Magic Kingdom, Epcot Resorts, you know, mm-hmm. Value Resorts, you know, whatever. I think they'll do more grouping than uh, Disney would have. Yeah. Um, the new service is called Mears Connect. It's uh, in response to the overwhelming demand and inquiries by future guests to Orlando's theme parks and resorts uh, going, hey, are you going to be running a shuttle or something? Mm-hmm. Uh, so all in reaction to Disney saying uh, goodbye to magical uh, depression. Uh, they're going to continue offering service between the airport and uh, all that. All right, so Mirrors Connect will offer the same safe and reliable uh, service the company has provided for millions of guests over the decades. I wonder what that count is. If anybody yeah. knows the total guest count that Mears did in the, I don't know, 10 years or so of service, I would love to know. I'd love to know. Do uh, you think they'll keep the buses? The what? You think they'll keep the buses? The same colors? No, no, go- no, no. They'll go back to the yellow Mears color. Gotcha. Yeah. 
they're Disney's not going to let them keep that wrap on that bus. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're like dropping people off at Universal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Mears Connect service will initially operate between uh, the Orlando International Airport and resorts in the Walt Disney World area. <laughs> it will provide fast and convenient transportation service for visitors in high occupancy vehicles. It's called a bus. Therefore, reducing traffic and lowering environmental impacts. I love the way they throw that name. Uh, they're still burning, you know, a bazillion gallons of diesel fuel. Anyway, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> guests can expect the scheduled service, luggage handling, convenient airport terminal staging, hence the area that Disney Magical Express is at, and return mm-hmm. trips from the resorts uh, to the airports. In addition, uh, Mears will offer enhancements to ensure guests greater convenience and vehicle options. Uh, pricing for all services will be announced later this year, along with the launch of the <laughs> custom reservation platform while mm. there was no mention of the charge at the press release guests begin making their reservations on 2022 can begin may of this year you will be able to start to make your reservations you can visit uh, www.mearsconnect.com to sign up for an email notification when the service goes live so from what i understand they're going to do buses like mini buses, like if you like the little, you know, bigger bus or the little mini bus kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are those? Like 16 passenger uh, vans all the way down to uh, regular uh, town cars. And they'll you know, give you a choice of what, you know, pain point of, you know, consumption you're willing to do. <clears throat> I also assume that they're in negotiations with the uh, airport authority to get that space that Disney was using. As their staging area and say, listen, Disney had it, you know, yeah. it was us driving the bus to tell us what you need money wise. Well, yeah. pony, we'll pony up the money. So makes sense. Yeah. It's filling, it's filling a need right now. I don't know why Disney discontinued it, but yeah. Did you, uh, did you see any video or pictures of the airport today? I did. Just, was that just one airline? No. That was all of the rental car companies. Holy cow. Those were all people that didn't want to take magical dispersion <laughs> that were looking for a rental car. And the worst line I heard was budget. That literally went from like one end of the building to the other. Listen, if that was me, if I was at the airport uh, and I had to wait that long, I would have gone outside, pulled out my Uber app and ordered an Uber. and would have been yeah. gone. I would have picked it up at Alamo at Disney World. You yeah. Know, that would have been that. I if bet I the, really, uh, really needed a car. I bet the Uber drivers are really excited right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hear they are. I hear they yeah, are. Great. All right. So um, we talked about the new Magic Mobile, and uh, I showed you my Magic Mobile uh, ticket. Uh, on my iPhone, Tony showed you his on his iPhone, and now if you're an Android user, uh, later on this month, you're going to be able to get your Magic Mobile tickets as well. Users of Android smartphones will soon be able to take advantage of the new contactless theme park entry system. At the end of March, Disney World's Magic Mobile park entry system debuted on Apple smartphones and watches. Despite their second fiddle status, <laughs> uh, Android users will not have to wait much longer before the option is available to them as well. Uh, Disney confirmed that Magic Mobile will launch on Android phones before the end of this month. Uh, Disney has not confirmed that there will be uh, if there will be minimum operating system requirements or if support will include Andrew, uh, Andrew, Android smartwatches. I don't know who Android is or Andrew is. Uh, Magic Mobile currently allows guests to use their supported phones and watches to enter theme parks, capture photo pass images, and gain access to the rise of the resistance versatile queue. Contactless payments are expected to be added soon. Praise God. Uh, watches cannot currently be used to open hotel room doors. However, a touchless entry option is available in the My Disney Experience smartphone app. So... Whoa, 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 whoa. Magic Mobile currently allows guests to use their supported phones and watches to the capture photo pass, gain access. Contactless payments are coming, expected to be added soon. Tony, does that mean? Well, for Android, we've had it for Apple Pay for a long time. It's yeah, Google yeah, Pay. But, but no, 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 no. What I'm talking about is will we be able to connect 
our credit card to Disney and use it as pass holders. No. They're talking Dang. about uh, Apple Pay or Just Google Apple Pay. Pay. Yeah, it, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, and uh, right. I, I don't know why watches can't be used on the hotel rooms yet. I know it, it doesn't. It doesn't work for uh, Apple. Never mind Android. But oh, I wonder right. why not. I don't know what the bugaboo would be because they both have Bluetooth. They both have Wi-Fi. They both have your My Disney Experience. I don't know. It's got to be some security. I, I'm a, I'm thinking security. Anyway, right. We'll let other people figure that out. Right. Uh, talking more about Disneyland, we're probably going to be talking about Disneyland a lot this month until it opens. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be a lot to say. Makes sense. And there's a lot of information. And like John said, just you know, contact our friends at Destination to Travel if you're planning on going. Uh, even if you do live in California, you are a California Disneyland expert. You know, just get a travel agent. It doesn't cost you anything, and they'll help. Mm-hmm. Nothing said. All right, so here's some uh, important information about tickets for Disneyland. All right, so uh, reservations open uh, today, April 12th, uh, to existing ticket holders, and then tickets actually go on sale for everybody else April 15th. Uh, there is a lot on the Disneyland page under the – know before you go uh and right. i mean a lot of information you should probably set aside about a good 15 minutes to read the know before you go information because right. it you know all the rules and regulations of going there or outlined there uh theme park reservation so to enter the disneyland park or disneyland california adventure park both theme park reservations Needed and a valid admission ticket for the same park on the same day are required for ages three and up. Guests must have a valid theme park admission ticket in order to make the reservation. So you need the ticket first and then you make the park reservation. I know that sounds kind of backwards because there may be some days that are blacked out and then you can't go on the days you want, but you have a ticket. So right. What I tell people is go look and see what days are available first. And if they are available, quickly purchase a ticket, link it to your app so that you can go get your park. I know that sounds kind of backwards, but that's just the way Disney's playing this game. Uh, right. Theme park reservations will be limited and subject to availability until further notice by only California residents uh, may visit the park. And like we said, no more than three households, not three people, but three households. You can have 100 people in these ho- each household if you can make right. that many reservations. Good at you. Uh, <laughs> we'll follow the current state guidelines. And also, from what we know, they're still at the 15%. Uh, they haven't changed that quite yet, so be be warned about that because that's you know the reservation system is going to be taxed pretty heavily. Uh, the theme right. park reservation system will launch on April twelfth. That was today, and guests with existing valid theme park tickets can begin making reservations uh, for the days that their ticket is valid. Theme park ticket sales will resume on April fifteenth, and guests without Park tickets may begin purchasing their tickets on that day. As a reminder, uh, ticket expiration dates were extended for a lot, if not all, the outstanding ticket media that was shut down. And it's been a year. So uh, you may have to call. Once again, travel agent can be your friend here. uh, To accommodate as many types of ticket holders as possible, That's like old people, new people, pass holders, all that kind of stuff. To accommodate Mm -hmm. as many ticket holder types as possible, park reservations for select days may be made available on a rolling basis. Uh, Ticket calendars will be updated on a rolling basis, so check for updated availability. Here are the key dates to remember. April 9th, which is in the past. Uh, If you currently hold a theme park ticket, you can check your available days for your one-day uh, ticket type beginning April 9th at Disneyland.com forward slash park updates. <laughs> Parks updates. Okay. Uh, 
April 12th, the theme park reservation system will open no earlier than uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time on April 12th, and guests who already have valid theme park tickets may begin their park reservations. April 15th, theme park ticket sales will resume no earlier than 8 a.m. Pacific time on April 15th, and guests without park tickets may begin purchasing uh, tickets and making reservations. Now, here would be my tip to you. I have two things for you. One is, like I said, get a travel agent. That's tip number one. Tip number two is don't try to go immediately because they're going to have to work out all these kinks with the park, the ticketing, you know, who's going to stand where, how are you going to stand, where the masks are, where the machine. So I would say just Give it a month or two. Let them work out the bugs. We had bugs here every day. New signs yeah. were being posted. Things were being changed. The rules were f- very fluid. So if you're not uh, able to, you know, go with those changes on a you know minute to minute basis, and listen, one cast member is going to tell you to stand here, and another cast member is going to tell you to stand somewhere else. That's just right. the way that's going to happen. So. Uh, You know, just be patient, and I would say just wait a little bit, give it a month or two, let them figure it all out. Uh, Because from what I heard here in Florida was the cast members had a debrief every uh, after every shift, so they met with their shift supervisors to say, "Hey, what was working, what was not working," so that they could go back to management and say, "Hey, we have to make adjustments for this, that, or the other thing." And that's, right. you know, how things were kind of shaking down here. So uh, I think you're going to experience the same growing pains we had. Yeah, of course. You know, and they're trying to do this under the most uh, stringent governor, gruesome rules. governor in, in this. In, well, to side between him and the guy up in New York. But yeah, yeah it's uh, it's a little different for you guys, considering you have to jump through way more hoops than we had to. So. Anyway, yeah. uh, some good news. We kind of talked about this a little earlier. Disneyland guests are going to be able to park hop uh, pending some availability. Uh, so theme parks at the Disneyland Resort are reopening on April 30th. We've been talking about that a lot. When the parks reopen, guests will be allowed to park hop between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. I'm excited by that for you. I think that's great. According to Disney, guests with park hopper tickets may choose pending availability which theme parks they want to start their day when making their theme park reservations and then will be able to visit the other park beginning at 1 p.m that same day guests with multi-day tickets will be required to make a separate park reservation for each day they plan to visit the theme parks similar to walt disney world park hopping guests wanting to park hop at disneyland will need to make a park reservation for their first park and then they can hop over to the other park at 1 p.m so long as there is availability at the park just because you have a park hopper ticket and you get into Disneyland does not guarantee that at 1 p.m. you're going to be able to bounce on over to California Adventure. You have to wait for availability over there before they'll let you in. Yep. Which, very, very interesting. Well, at least they're yeah. getting it right off the bat. They didn't have to wait for it like we did. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Fair point. They, uh, yeah. you know, well, they also only have two parks and uh, a promenade in between them. <laughs> they didn't have to worry about buses and trams and boats and planes and trains yeah. and monorails to move people between those things. And then- yeah, if you want to, if you want to, if you can go, you know, all you have to do is walk out the front gate at twelve fifty. Yeah, you're in Disney California Adventure twelve or one o'clock on the yeah. button. Yeah. Yeah. We don't uh, have that luxury. <laughs> yeah, we do not have that luxury. <laughs> you can walk out of anything and not be anywhere by one fifty. Yeah. That's true. You, you may be at the bus stop if you're lucky. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, hey, if you're looking for a mask or a cover or a sticker or a button or something like that, go over to uh, DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash T-E-E-E public. T-E-E public. Uh, go check out some of the goodies uh, we have over there before they're yeah. gone. All right, kid. How about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. Okay. Uh, Something I don't watch are trailers, because I don't like watching them. Um, But 
Disney released a new trailer uh, for Cruella. So uh, go check wherever you watch your trailers. So you didn't watch that one either? No. No. Mm-hmm. I want it. I don't want to. I don't want it to be ruined. I want to watch Fair it point. when I watch it. Fair point. Uh, there's an also an all new trailer for Black Widow. I haven't seen any mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's missing two, out, bro. Two trailers you got. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an update. So the costume uh, exhibition uh, from the Walt Disney Archives <laughs> is now headed to Seattle, Corey. Mopop. Mopop. Yep. Mopop in June. That's the Museum of Pop Culture, as they call it. Uh, it's heading there in June. Cool. Uh, the Florida governor is taking on the uh, CDC uh, and suing them. So he's going to try and sue a government agency and tell them they have to start the uh, cruise line business up. That it is killing uh, Florida and its uh, economy. There you go. I'd like to see the outcome I, uh, of that. I like, uh, I like our governor. I respect him. Uh, I don't always agree with everything. Uh, I hope this does not uh, blow up in his face. Because, you know, he sues, he wins, CDC opens up the cruise industry, and one person is going to catch it and pass away, and he's going to be a murderer. Yep. That'll be the story, anyway. I don't yep. believe that. That'll be the story. Yep. Anywho. Uh, well, good thing the ships all have a morgue on them. Uh, That's true. June, 